Hey, Brian here with DIY Outdoor Life. Today I'm with another Brian, but the difference with this Brian is he has a really sweet home build he's gonna take us on a tour of. This is gonna be super exciting, stay tuned. Okay, so my name is Brian Hooks. I'm from Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, this camper is a project from about two winters ago. Uh, it's based primarily on the Tony Latham book, uh, plus a bunch of YouTube uh, uh, resources like this. So let's take a quick tour. We'll start with the galley. So this is the galley. Uh, I went with a uh, Yeti cooler as opposed to a DC fridge just to cut down on the size of the battery bank that I would need. Uh, meets all of my needs. The camper uh, in my uses for kayaking. So I'll spend two and three days uh, in the kayak on over a weekend, but I don't have any need to boondock, so I don't, didn't need a whole lot of power. So got a uh, two burner stove uh, powered off of uh, propane that's mounted on the side of the camper and then tucked back behind the two camper stove for my power source. I've got a uh, a single Renogy lithium battery uh, that's fed by two solar, solar panels up on top. Now I see you're going with the Rover for the MPPT. You've been happy yes. with your off-grid performance. You're getting a good charge to the battery. So I'll, I'll use the power out of it um, uh, without even thinking about it. I'll wake up the next morning. At, at the worst, I've seen 97%. So 97% is a pretty good <laughs> Never uh, had to think level. about charging. But everything looks real modest on the electrical use. You're not doing anything. There's no inverter in there running outlets? None or? at all. It's all DC. It's all LED. 200 watts allows, of solar. And 200 watts of solar for right. the single battery. So if you wanted to add a DC fridge, you got room for days as far as power is I do. concerned. So, but like you I said, do. with less boondock and the Yeti is good. I love your cabinetry work. Can you show us some of these drawers? Oh, absolutely. So there are the, the ones that carry any weight in them are lockable. So, and then just general storage. You can never have too much. And those are swinging cabinets? They are um, cheap Chinese hinges. Yep. They're supposed to stay up that's the only one for the that first does. couple weeks that's the and only then, one that does and the then they're self-closing they're self-closing yeah. which is fantastic you don't forget it so but. i'm gonna ask you some questions about the build from the trailer you know as a whole but back here on the galley this is baltic birch yep and and you frame this out you what did you finish with so this is spar varnish okay Everything like back here is covered. Yep. yep, just like they do on boats. I figured that'd be better for, for water. Fish. And that's what Mike uses as well on camp and it, camera, right? It is. Does Tony use that? Uh, it's I one of, he, he gives you some options, okay. and that was one of the options that he references. So you cut your splines out of plywood, bent this. I Where did. did you end up sourcing this material? So this was the hardest thing of the entire camper to get. I built yeah. this during COVID, supply issues, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I live in Knoxville. I had to drive yeah. to Toledo, Ohio to source the, the Baltic birch. Well, so. <laughs> it's, you still saved a lot of money. It was expensive uh, birch. <laughs> yeah, but you got to go on a road trip for us. So. Absolutely. I see you have a battery monitor. You have a whole DC center with some 12 volts. Do these switches do. go to anything yet? Uh, they do. All of these switches are the back end lights. Okay. And then this top row is my external lighting on the sides of the camper. Got it. And the blue lights underneath. Oh, yeah, we picked so that up. That was really cool. The, the lights underneath are so that my wife's not scared by the monsters when she comes back at but night. But they don't attract bugs either. So yeah. you got the right colors. Yeah, so. and all of the LED lights, I looked for the right Kelvin temperature for that as Perfect. well. I don't Very remember smart. what that is. The idea is when you put bright white LEDs, you come back and it's like a moth, you know, so yeah. very cool. Absolutely. All right, well, so, if you take us around the side. The Chinese diesel heater, this is the diesel that feeds that. One gallon? <clears throat> uh, Half I, gallon? I think it's three quarter gallon. Three it's, quarter it gallon. It came in liters. But that'll run you a month. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah this years. thing is so efficient. So it's the great. trailer has a Chinese diesel heater, right. um, so it just constantly goes. There's not like a cycle with the thermostat? No, all it really does is it, it cycles a dosing pump. So the number cycles of the fuel, of cycles but the fan is constant. So, and that's good on your battery here too. Yeah. Very cool. Yep. So uh, propane, and let me come back to that. The diesel yeah. heater, I kayak, all my stuff is, this was soaking wet yesterday. I'll hang it up for five minutes inside and it sucks all the moisture out. The difference between propane furnaces, indirect units, diesel heaters, 
versus like a Mr. Buddy. Right. It's not putting moisture in the air. So it's like a nice dryer. Even though we're in a hot climate, you yeah. can run the furnace and then when you, you know, air it out before you go to bed and it's a yeah. dryer. <laughs> As a result of that, no moisture in there ever to, to wipe down. Amazing. So I'm super pleased with Very that. Cool. But yeah, propane for my two burner tank. This little thing lasts all season long. Yeah. So. Uh, that mount, Amazon find? This was hours and hours of research. <laughs> I know, I on knew it. So, and you'll have to look later at the name brand. I don't remember. We'll put a link in the description for that. But this is always, uh, people are always shocked at what they cost. You got to get a good one. It was expensive. It, it's expensive and there, it takes hours of research. But I was but willing to pay a little extra to not watch this bounce down the interstate. You don't want it bouncing down the <laughs> interstate. <laughs> Two solar panels on top uh, and then the fan mounted right between them. So you went with the max fan, you can use it in the rain. Uh, does the speed modulate really well? Very well. So you can get the low speed and pick it up if you need it. That's important when you're yeah. sleeping. Do you have any side vents or do you use your window for I do. the draw? I've, I use the window for the draw on both sides. So if, you, if it you're blowing like out, it, it has a spot to blow in, yep. to suck in. Perfect. Um, now let's take a step back for a second. You <laughs> had this frame built using Tony Latham's plans. I did. So it's an overbuilt frame. You didn't go with a Harbor Freight or a Northern Tool. You, I could put my house on it, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> what, and it, with his dimensions, it yeah. pulls like an absolute champ. I don't have any S turning issues. It's a very, that. very rugged frame. I'll try to get some shots, some B-roll that we'll put in later on that. Dexter torsion axle? Uh, no, this okay. is just spring, uh, leaf spring. Just a leaf spring, axles. perfect. Do yep. you know what your trailer weighs? I don't. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's much. You can. Yeah, you can pull it around by hand. I, I think it's probably in the 1,000 to 1,500 range, but I, I haven't You might even it. be high on that. It, I might it looks, be. Yeah. I might be. So yeah. plywood construction, fiberglass, and then Raptor, and then Rhino Raptor style liner. lining. Yep. Same thing on the roof as the sides? The same as... And then you overlap exactly. the roof over? Yep. Now, do you have a lot of experience doing stuff like this? I've never done this. I have no idea what, I'm, what I was doing. So with the internet... Yep. A book yep. and a couple friends. There's some great communities out there. You tackled this project. And weekends on a winter. Weekends in one winter? Yes, four months. Now that's that's pretty impressive. Did you tally up what you spent or no? I didn't. No, good. I intended Smart. to. I tried. No, don't even forget. worry about it. It's a good time. <laughs> yeah. You built your doors. I did. So I'll show you that. Um, I did not intend to buy the doors mm -hmm. or to build the doors. I right. intended to buy them. Yep. But I cut the radiuses out. Uh -huh. You can't buy a door with, with, with a radius, radius. Is small. So for those of you who are total beginners at this, if you're building a trailer, everyone gets to the door planning stage. Yeah. Now, a, a store-bought door it costs yeah. more than a lot of the other materials put together. Yeah. But building a door can be a daunting task, too. You had any trouble? You. So it, it, it wasn't... It was more mental challenge yeah. than, than physical. I mean... I'm not skilled in woodworking, so right. I was looking to just have a turnkey solution. But right. Me too. <laughs> you can't buy doors with three inch radiuses, and that's what this is, so I jumped in. And it was not terribly difficult with a good router. A good router, um, I've seen people try it with a jigsaw, but a yeah. good router goes yeah. a long way, and you got the hardware. Where did you and source all, your stuff? All of this framing, yeah. I had to build jigs for. Okay. Just to, to get it on this tight of a radius without it buckling. Bend it clean. So, so you don't have to be intimidated. Like you said, you're not a carpenter of 30 years. You just went yeah. at this. I, yeah. I'm impressed by that. Um, I think with mine, I, I was one of the people, I'd buy a door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. No, well, me too. You, you did too. <laughs> so, I mean, you did a good job with them. I'll show you inside. So my electrical system is on the top left side there for all my fuses and that sort of stuff, as well as the switches for the lights. Perfect. Now, he's holding these hangers. This is part of that dryer you're talking about. Yes. I do this. I hang stuff yeah. up and turn the furnace on, and you have yeah. a built-in closer blanket dryer. Now, you've had no leaks. You drip. It poured last night. Yeah. I have a shot of yeah. a tree that fell down just over here. A uh, high winds. Dries bone? It dries bone. Not really a single nice. leak. Now, you used, uh, like, any lap sealant or anything around your fan or any of the things that go I, through your ceiling? I did. I don't remember the name Probably brand of the, the sealant. You know, so just yeah. some self-leveling. Yes, it was self-leveling. Yeah. Uh, butyl tape or any of the other? Yes. Tape. In fact, behind any penetration, 
yeah. I have butyl tape. Nice. And those are carriage. Those go. Those bolts they go do. right through. They do. So the structure of this, you have plywood on the sides, but you cut the splines into the roof. I did. What did you bend to get your radius on the front? So I've got the Baltic birch. Same as your galley birch. Same as the galley. And just did layers? Yep. How many? Uh, it's just one layer just on one the layer. inside, one layer on the outside. Very nice. Insulation? So, yes. What did yep. you go with? Um, it's the pink stuff. Foam, uh, fiberglass or foam? Foam. Foam, so this is a huge, it's probably a closed cell foam. Yeah. Uh, the, the fiberglass insulation wicks moisture. It's kind of disgusting. Okay. Yeah. It's gross, the, you know, so you just cut your pieces out. I did, I had a to curve them some okay. on the sharper radiuses, but Very it, cool. it, it just took time. This trailer looks amazing. So this finish that you did with the Raptor lining, everything looks super water secure. You got your hinges on Amazon, yeah. where'd you go? Uh, this is from a, a trailer, um, from a, a teardrop tailor, trailer supplier. I can't remember the name of it. It's very, very popular. There's a few, yeah, and I know some people go on road trips to like Traegers and they, they try to go where they get discount. It's oh. worth the drive, but there's several places online that source teardrop yeah. hurricane hinges. Yes, it's the same, same place. place I got the hurricane hinge as well as this aluminum. Let's go back so. to that for a second. You're using this, I call it the Tony design. Yeah. Um, and yeah. he watches the channel from time to time. He'll appreciate that. But uh, my cameraman and I are driving a trailer that the Hurricane the Hinge leaks inside. And okay. it just has to do with the fact that they cut it flush. Right. It just wicks around. So this overhang right here is what allows you to use this in the rain. Yep. Any issues with water Let's infiltration? Let's drip off the side. I've never had a drop of water inside the, the galley. So you sealed everything down. You used butyl tape on I penetrations, did. and then you used the top bead. Yes. Um, so, I mean, I, I love everything about it. You did a great job. Thank you. I'm super proud of it. Not a lot to see up here. Got the, the, the box up front uh, just to keep stuff dry and stored. Um, and then a way to jack the trailer, hook it up. It's got the seven pin. Got brakes on my truck that punches through that. But I'm not powering the batteries through that and I'm not using the DC to DC. So he's using a lithium battery, he's got the seven pin, but you have that section disconnected. You're not trying to steal a charge off no. your alternator. The two panels charge when you're driving down the road. Right. But now the wiring's there, so if you do want to go to a DC, you have a place to I wanted to build the ability to, to be able to boon, do, boondock in the future, but uh, I just don't do that right now. So. Perfect. Now what type of thing, is this just a catch-all you said? It is just a catch-all. Um, you know, your standard, I got chocks for the tires and and uh, shoes that I don't want to put in the camper. And... Every teardrop person yeah. learns they need a spot to put their lock, their wheel chucks, their leveling blocks, and yep. they don't want it in the camper. So yep. really cool stuff. So, Folks, I learned a lot today. I am so into this trailer. I can't thank Brian enough. Thank you. Nice name. Solid, <laughs> of solid course. Right. Two Brian's and a home built. Um, I'm most impressed with what I hope can encourage you guys. So I don't know if you have a quick word, but with no skills whatsoever or experience, you took this on. What was the motivation? Uh, the motivation was to be able to have a place to stay dry and comfortable and be able to kayak on so the weekends. So you like going out on weekends and kayaking and you were, yep. you're a build it, don't buy it type of guy. Yeah, absolutely. You can do that too. Send us messages. I'll give you the resources that he used if you're into this thing. Can't thank you enough. Hey, you got it, brother. Have a good one. I will catch you guys next time.